Hello darlings and welcome to the first episode of Closet Confessions. In this series, I drag one of my friends unwillingly into my closet, as you can see, to have an unedited and uncensored conversation. Joining me in the closet today, rather cramped, is Faisal Hashmi. <laughs> Faisal, how are you doing? I'm doing good, as good as I can do in a closet. And, yeah, pretty uh, much. Yeah. What do you think of my clothes? It's it's pretty good. I can smell a lot of good textures and stuff here. That's nice. How do you smell the textures? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. I've never been in a closet. I don't even know how to describe it. Is this the first time you're in the closet? Absolutely. And hopefully and the last one. Oh, the last. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a filmmaker based in the UAE. Mm-hmm. I've made a bunch of different short films. Uh, you know, self-made. which have won a number of awards. Yes. Thank you for saying that instead yes. of me. And uh, yeah, I'm writing a feature film also now. I do a lot of commercial content and stuff like that. So yeah, it's working as a filmmaker in the region. What has been kind of the the best thing so far in your career as a filmmaker? I used to write a lot of uh, stuff. So mm-hmm. like just seeing that from like a like something on the page to like actually being a movie, even if it's like a low budget movie or like something more produced, it's just awesome to kind of just end up seeing something that I just wrote randomly. On a, at a 3 a.m. and to come to life in front of me, so it's pretty. You cool. seem to do all your good writing at like 3 in the morning. Exactly. Why, that's why I make. Because I've known you for a couple of number of years, and you don't sleep. Like you have weird sleep yeah. timings. That's why I think I've been making more horror movies now. Because at 3 a.m., like it's pretty much the best. You're not gonna write a rom com at like what was, at 3 a.m. What was the last horror movie you filmed? I think it was. Was it the one with Brett Black? That's the one. It's it's yeah. a movie called Slight. It takes place entirely in a radio station, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's a pretty creepy little movie. And that's the last one. And I'm writing. I'm trying to do not horror next, so I'm just okay. doing something science fiction. So hopefully. That's like is that going to be your challenge not doing horror films? Uh, yes, although it is it gets a little horror towards yeah. the end, you know. I, I can't I can't escape it. It's spoilers. Just, yeah, yeah. Spoilers people. This is a horror movie setup yeah. what you are in. So We just like, need to close the doors and never <laughs> yeah, be up again. Exactly. So, uh, one of the fir- one of the first few short films I did was uh, selected for Cannes Short Film Corner, mm-hmm. which is awesome because that was before that I was just making stuff like Scrappy and when I, when that happened I was like, "Oh shit, okay, this is like something yeah. a little serious. Maybe I should take it more seriously." Yeah. So just that and I got to travel to Tunisia once like to at a film festival where they invited me and just like seeing people from a completely different culture just watching mm-hmm. the same movie seeing different interpretations of it which i you know was like okay that's an interesting way of looking yeah. at it so i think just seeing how different people kind of take something i made and kind of find their own meaning in it is really really cool does that then expand your kind of storyboard ideas and how you can interpret future films exactly yeah i mean i think i think the more you travel the world you kind of see other cultures and i'm like okay I, this is something it's so many ideas that i got when i was in in tunisia and i was like okay this is like some really cool cultural stuff that i can include into my next horror movie and make mm-hmm. make it make it more like interesting than just like the random like yeah. stand up stuff yeah what what do you think has been like the biggest challenge for you with making films here in this region like you don't really have a film industry per se it's a movement I, I would say but it's like you so you know you finding actors is a little tricky you know that's why i work with lo- usually non actors uh, i will send you my, my headshot and absolutely absolutely of course he's already acted in a in a in a movie playing a news reporter and that was a really cool little that's stand out best moment. role of my life yeah it was the best part of the movie and it was like i was like okay this is yeah. it this is a movie yeah. so so yeah finding you know actors is hard you know finding producers to like fund your movie for example it's a bit much hard that's why like i have to just shoot with the stuff i have mm-hmm. so yeah so there's no like infrastructure here yet but and again like you instead of looking at the negative you're like okay let me make something from it and mm-hmm. uh, but the advantage is that if you make something good like people will watch it what has been something that like drives you up the wall with filmmaking either whether you're doing something on your own or something for a client I've had some really bad like clients uh, experiences especially when because I also edit a lot of the stuff that I'm doing yeah. so like just confused clients where I like send them an edit and they're like oh can you do something this way and then I do it this way and then they're like oh, we want to go back to that yeah one. exactly and then they go and then like they're like oh our boss just came in and saw the video yeah. and he wants to go back I'm like why didn't you all like just sit down one go to yeah. decide your final notes and just like send it across to me like no 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 they just like and at the end it just goes back to the first draft oh, that I would that I originally send them after yeah. like a month of notes so that's like that's the yeah, yeah. That's, no fun. that's like your horror story that's, yeah exactly so like, like your your next horror film should be just like just a guy editing yeah yeah, yeah, just, yeah exactly. like just you and premiere pro Nothing, just yeah. like it's, it's, yeah that's yeah. the most innately scary thing ever it will kill yeah. you <laughs> did you think that it would come to you know where you are today you know having having all this exposure all being able to travel to these various film festivals having your work seen by people around the globe i didn't even know you could be a filmmaker until like i think the dslr like what we're filming on like kind of was was kind of a change in my life i was like okay people can like buy cameras that actually look good and you know so i was like Only, only then I was like, okay, maybe I can become a filmmaker. So it's been insane to just kind of think of that. Maybe I can, like, I'm writing a feature film now that I'm also filming. I think of filming with, you know, smaller cameras. So just the idea of like I can do that without needing necessarily a lot of, you know, support is is uh, is, is pretty cool. So that's kind of been the highlight. It's just like it really changed the way that I I see stuff. Because I was like, okay, this is like this is Hollywood and this is like people. This is audience and this people. But you mm-hmm. can kind of merge both the things. Like you're doing a YouTube show right now. So yes. it's kind of cool that anybody can just pick up a camera and do something creative with it. Favorite movie. Favorite movie. Uh, Rosemary's Baby. Worst movie you've seen in the past six months? Uiji. Director you'd love to work with? Christopher Nolan. Person you draw the most inspiration from? James Wan, who's the best horror filmmaker currently working, The Conjuring, Insidious, other stuff. So okay. he's the like, 
something special. Like he's doing big budget horror stuff, which I'm mm-hmm. like, that's cool. So people are doing like on a big budget because most horror movies that are being like made nowadays are like a couple of million dollars, like small budget stuff. But yeah. he's like getting a big budget, big crew, yeah. and now he's doing Aquaman, so it's pretty cool. Like he's he's made it. A actor, actress you would love to cast in one of your films? Denzel Washington. <laughs> Seeing he could just change the thing, and I will never change. I will like you, you, that was better. Best part of being a filmmaker. Seeing. An audience watching your movie and just like you know when 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 sometimes it's, the room is dark and people are watching I sometimes just in the middle of the movie just turn around and see people just looking at the screen just mm-hmm. just, just having them see your movie and react in the ways that you hope that they were reacting mm-hmm. this is the most best best feeling ever. Now we were talking about this uh, some time ago and we were kind of like gently discussing about um, racial representation in Hollywood films and just in general filmscape yeah. and how now in Hollywood there are a couple of Pakistani actors yes. that are really really like out there and really representing yeah. Pakistani yeah. you know people yeah. and and what do you think about that what do you think about that whole diversity scheme I think it's it I think film? it's awesome I think people need to see like people that look like them in mm-hmm. in, in cinema and like you know if you've been used to seeing you know American like white actors really on screen so mm-hmm. it's it's awesome that especially it's movies like Star Wars when they're including like you know Pakistani actors or Indian actors or just people that you know that look like different from other uh, nationalities i think when this it, i think it also expands uh, the the kind of audience base of the movie because people might just watch it because that actor is and also like i think it gives it's an equal opportunity for all the other actors of so many, like i know so many talented actors who you know like at these bit parts in indie movies and stuff like that just see them kind of get hollywood roles it's awesome just you know you 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 want diversity and i think i think thankfully the current trend is towards that so hopefully i can also be a part of that in terms of you know behind the scenes in front of the camera it's really cool that you know that movie is there the best advice i would give somebody is like if you want to make a movie you will find your own path and just make make it don't don't wait for other people to come and tell you what what they, what they want to do because if i would have be waited for the traditional route of like waiting for money i would still be waiting for money mm-hmm. So so I would just be like you know pick up a camera pick up even an iPhone like an iPhone now can shoot better video quality than like a, a film camera could like 20 years ago mm-hmm. so you just pick up a phone and just make something with your friends and like learn and just do it again and you know just 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 make it out if it was me I would just be like yeah you know write the genre that you would like to watch as in you know when you're when you're going to cinema just mm-hmm. slide write something you love and hopefully other people will love it too where can we find you online if people want to stalk you so you can follow me at Faisal Hashmi on Twitter as well as Faisal Hashmi you can follow my films on Hashmi House Films that's a YouTube page so you can find all of my short films there I'm on Vimeo as well. I'm pretty much on all social media, so if you He's find everywhere, I'm in. Like, I, I try to be not as much as 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 well, much as Nick. Of here. course not. Of course, of course you never yeah. even come close. It's an inspiration <laughs> for sure. I learned, Aww, but it's, uh, a, it's lovely to have you in the closet with me. Absolutely, yeah, so thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, you're you know, like it's. Very interesting, and I hope to see this episode like you know, not look as creepy as I think it's going to end up looking. <laughs> uh, Faisal, thanks for joining me on this episode of Closet Confessions. I will put links to uh, all of Faisal's social and his YouTube channel in the description below, and we hope to see you guys soon for another episode of Closet Confessions. I'm very comfortable at this point. I just want to say, just like sleep here, <laughs> just like just close the door. Yeah, this is all right.